So hello everyone, I'm Benny Lim, uh, the Dean and Associate Professor of the Faculty of Liberal Arts, Bajai University College. So with me today are two colleagues from the School of Hospitality, Ms. Dewi and Mr. Rona. They are here to talk about the Erasmus Plus Friends Project, yeah, which we have been running for the past couple of years. So let's hear from them. So maybe we go straight to the point. Yeah? So first question, tell me this whole Erasmus Plus Friends Project, you know, what is this about and when did it begin? Yeah. Okay, sure. Uh, Erasmus Plus Friends itself is actually one of the capacity building project that is funded by Erasmus uh, European Union uh, that focus actually on the internationalization at home. Uh, we are fortunate, uh, Berjaya University are very fortunate to be one of the two universities mm. okay. in Malaysia to get this uh, very prestigious grant. Uh, France itself is actually an abbreviation, a very long abbreviation, I have to refer to my paper to read it. <laughs> Furthering international relations capacities and intercultural engagement to nurture campus diversity and to support internationalization at home. That is the long very version long. of France, very yeah. long. Uh, the project itself will be uh, for three years, uh, 2018 until 2021. Um, we're doing this, I mean the consortium actually doing this because this project is actually built around the assumption that the mobility in Asia are very low. Mm. Uh, we are very lack of uh, mobility, we are very lack of intercultural education to build the global competence for the students, and we also, uh, not so much of the uh, institution that has a uh, infrastructure. Uh, while Malaysia itself is actually a real international uh, education hub, that in 2018, uh, 2016, we have about 172,000 international students and it will grow by 2025 about 250,000 uh, mm. that will be in our uh, Malaysia higher education target. So with that uh, in mind, for us it's actually a good thing because we can improve the quality of service and also we can improve the uh, care to our international students, whether it is inbound or outbound. Mm. So, so how can Bajaya University College be involved in this whole project? I mean, what uh, what outcomes do you expect, you know, to see from our students who participate from this project? Um, uh, according to the uh, project objectives, it's basically uh, to introduce uh, local students to the concept of. Uh, inclusiveness and also uh, cultural diversity but at the same time um, from where we see as the project coordinator it's not only the student that will benefit of course uh, this is another new way of learning because we have a MOOC which is a massive open online course uh, we are offering this uh, as part of the France project um, at the institutional level, since we are new in the market, so basically internationalization helps with the reputation and also image of the institution. So um, the outcome has many, um, um, what do you call that? Uh, there's many levels of outcome, yeah, to the student, to the institution, to, to the national yes, level and to the yeah, level. region. Um, Hopefully, this can uh, assist um, local students in uh, accepting more uh, international students uh, within their social and uh, academic life. Yeah, yeah. But, but you mentioned that uh, you know this. Uh, we are one of the two you know universities in Malaysia to be involved in this project. You know, per se. So, so how did we get selected, or you know, how did we get involved in the first place? Um, how do we get involved? Um, we have a former colleague. Uh, she is from Poland, so, so she introduced the the um, deputy vice chancellor at that time uh, with this uh, contact from Bulgaria because at that time the um, leader of this project wanted to find contacts in uh, Malaysia. Um, and she wanted an institution that has uh, received undergraduates that comprises of international students. Because in 
public university they, they are not uh, they're very limited they have the quota to accept mm. uh, international students and most of the international students are postgraduate so therefore mm. uh, the consortium uh, wanted to find institution that has accepted um, international student and from there the discussion became a proposal and then this proposal was submitted to the European Union for consideration of the grant for capacity building project and once it was approved then it was announced in Brussels I think end of 2018 and uh, early last year uh, when they uh, distribute the, the grant uh, I was there in uh, Brussels as well together with the the leader of the uh, project itself from mm -hmm. Bulgaria. So that's yeah. how uh, we got into this uh, project. Mm. Yeah. Um, actually, in Malaysia, we have six uh, capacity building projects, but only one, the one that we are in, that involves private institutions. Yeah. The other five uh, involve uh, public uh, universities, I public see. institutions. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, what is expected of the students? You know, what do the students uh, have to do exactly? Okay, at the moment, we are actually at the prototyping stage. In the prototype stage, uh, we are expected to um, build students' intercultural knowledge and sensitivity uh, to the cultural diversity by introducing the in intercultural passport uh, virtually. So this is a, a, an online course learning that the students are actually has to go through to get the intercultural passport. Uh, the aim of this is to increase their intercultural uh, knowledge and skills, uh, to increase their awareness, of course, uh, for them to be able to understand the global competence, uh, cross-culture uh, communication, and we prepare them to be a global citizen. So this is one of the things that they need to do. Uh, they have to do the MOOC uh, online learning. They have uh, the, one the, uh, the other things that they need to do, uh, which is the output of this, is the digital storytelling. In the digital storytelling, uh, it is a two or three minutes video about their experience on their cross-culture, their internationalization journey, their global experience, their cross-cultural culture, could be a funny one, could be the serious one. Um, things are depends on uh, what are the experience of the students itself to actually uh, going through this internationalization journey. So as you have mentioned, yeah, the whole idea of cultural diversity through this, you know, intercultural passport project, you know, and also cross-cultural communication is very, very important on this project. I mean, this is what the Erasmus Plus friends, you know, is really trying to get at. So. Maybe you can share with me exactly what is cultural diversity or you know, what is cross-cultural communication? I mean, in, in your own perspective, yeah. Okay, um, cultural diversity itself, uh, as we know, with, in, a, in this global world at the moment, uh, people are just are able to travel everywhere with the internet, people can communicate with everybody. So, um, cultural diversity itself is actually uh, having a different cultures and actually respect the different cultures and their differences. And this of course will lead to uh, the how to communicate with a lot of different people from a lot of different uh, places, different culture, different religion, different race. Uh, of course they have their own uh, characteristic, um, whether it is verbal, whether it is non-verbal, this can actually relate to later on with with so much of the uh, of course companies that are uh, multinational or international especially in in this hospitality industry background that uh, people can just travel everywhere and work everywhere mm. they want so uh, cultural diversity is very important for this for this uh, global um, world mm. today and and Rona what do you think um, cultural diversity, uh, to add what Dewi uh, mentioned just now, cultural diversity in the context of this uh, project is basically um, to focus on local students' ability to accept and to work around the culture of other 
uh, nationalities and students from other countries. Um, so that is cultural diversity in this context. But at the same time, we also hope that through the module, the academic staff and professional staff of the college uh, can also benefit from the module by uh, having a clearer understanding what they need to do in terms of um, uh, teaching local students and international students what are the difference and how they should work around that. Uh, and this will lead to uh, intercultural communication. Uh, to certain students, there are certain um, do's and don'ts that you can do and uh, there are certain topics that we don't discuss. And um, yeah, I think in, in the context of this project, intercultural communication uh, basically is how you uh, communicate with people from other nationalities uh, to certain extent, different uh, political ideologies. Yeah, so it's all interrelated. So what you think uh, as an individual, and it has effect to um, your academic life, social, economy, um, uh, issues that affects the region, and uh, yeah, many more. So you know, how do you think uh, students, yeah, who who take part in this project could truly benefit from? this whole Friends project? Okay, this Friends project itself uh, actually will help them to improve their intercultural knowledge and skills, of course, uh, with the uh, of knowing and expanding themselves, their knowledge and their, their capacity on that, uh, their sensitivity to other cultures, their sensitivity to uh, different people coming from a different background, can also help them to improve their employability. Um, of course, when people know that you are actually uh, uh, have an awareness of this diversity of a culture, people can be they will be happy to able to, to actually take you in and uh, you're more employ you're high you have a high chances of uh, employability compared to other uh, students that doesn't have that um, and it is not for. Uh, our students in in very specific but can be also for a lot of different and these students can actually uh, disseminate this intercultural to their family and it will affect the region and national in Malaysia as well so we could be a little bit more uh, sensitive about the different culture that uh, we already have a lot of different culture here in Malaysia itself um. To add to that, uh -huh. uh, to add to that, I think um, not only students have the ability to work around other people's culture, but also, um, like Devi have mentioned, um, have an understanding of how other culture works. And in case you are to work in a group with people from different culture or different uh, nationalities. Um, there is an awareness uh, and uh, sensitivity that uh, there are some don'ts and do's that you can apply. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, this affects um, uh, interpersonal skills and teamwork. And uh, since now, companies are becoming more globalized and hiring uh, internationals, uh, foreign nationals is now very common, even to the extent that uh, our local students go out of the country to find employment. So, uh, in the end of the day, um, understanding what is cultural diversity and being aware what is uh, uh, intercultural uh, relation uh, uh, is uh, beneficial to them. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they were studying, of course, they, if they still study, uh, this is not only for them to be able to know other uh, culture, but uh, it's very good so that they can do a uh, mobility program as well. Uh, we will have a lot of that after this grant with uh, Erasmus Plus. So because we have quite a lot of MOU that actually uh, are waiting for a mobility program for the students. So one of the outputs required is the submission of a digital story. Yeah. So can you share a little bit more about the requirement of this submission? Yes, as part of the um requirement of this um, MOOC, students have to submit uh, digital storytelling. So what is required 
uh, of course it needs to be an original uh, work of the students they uh, cannot uh, add in uh, elements or work that is not their own like for example uh, music. Uh, music that is not their own um, and also for example they uh, copy and edit videos, existing videos in YouTube, that is a no-no. It should be their own uh, copyright work. Um, there is also restriction in the content. Uh, no nudity, no profanity, no vulgar uh, language or behavior. Uh, should not be promoting any illegal behavior. Um, there should not be any elements that uh, um, point out to a certain race or religion or gender or sexual orientation. Um, the language of the story can be in local language but have to be added with uh, English subtitle or can be the other way around, um, done in English and added with local language uh, subtitle. Um, yeah, the format of course it's a video format mm -hmm. uh, but the angle can be just about anything can be personal stories, can be... Uh, Could be still image. Yeah, image, uh, yeah. Um, the, the more information uh, on the digital storytelling, we have a digital storytelling manual at our website, uh, erasmusplusfriends.eu. You can always go there. Um, it's a place where, where you register as well. So you can register, you can uh, see the digital storytelling manual and also you all can see the MOOC, uh, what, what's happening with the MOOC and when is it going to start and everything. All the information you can get it over there. So this is the absolute last question, yeah? So can you maybe say something, I mean to the camera, to, the camera, uh, to encourage okay. students to participate in this project? Um, at the moment we have 130 students are actually registering for this. And we can encourage everybody, uh, all the students of Berjaya, because everybody in Berjaya, as long as they're full-time students, they're entitled to take this opportunity. Yeah? And this opportunity is not only for the students who wants to go to Bulgaria for eight weeks, do the boot camp, doing some exchange program, but uh, I personally think that it is uh, a program that will benefit the students, not only for short term but also for their long term for for their for their future mm. and you do you have anything to add on uh, since this is uh, free and you have the opportunity to learn new skills by doing the digital storytelling and by doing the modules in MOOC I think this is the best time uh, to gain additional knowledge while they are still students in this college yeah so yeah don't wait mm. register, register now, now. <laughs> So thank you very much. Yeah. So you. yes, you know, I hope you'll register after, you know, listening to this interview. All right. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.